When it comes to healthcare, especially in this COVID-19 era, you know, we're doing a lot of teledoc, a lot of, you know, telemedicine being our healthcare providers via technology. Well, when it comes to, you know, dispersion communities, communities by that, I mean, in Africa, for example, that technology doesn't serve them very well. Oh, in minority communities, even here in the West, how do we tackle that? How do we fix it? And that's exactly what we're talking about with today's guest, Mohamed Kamara. He's a founder of Enough Care, uh, where you can use a platform where you can use to connect with your healthcare provider. Man, I'm excited for this conversation. You guys are gonna enjoy it. It's a treat. This company or this enough care that he found is well close to a million dollars in annual revenue right now. So he breaks all of that down. He has an incredible story. Let's jump right into the video, man. I'm excited for it. It's the Second Middle Podcast, a platform for entrepreneurs, innovators, creators of African descent. I'm your host, Reflex. Let's get into it. You are watching and listening to Stuck in the Middle Podcast. I'm your host, Reflex. This is a platform for entrepreneurs, innovators, creators of African descent, where we discuss ideas, experiences, and advice on how we can break the mold, how we can break barriers. We have a dynamic special guest in the building today, or joining us on the line, rather. But before that, I want to thank you again for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit the ringer so you get updates every time we drop something new. And if you're riding right now, you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever, do a screenshot, whatever you park, or if you're in the crib, you know what I'm saying, share this thing so we can grow. SITMPodcast.com is, is the website. Go check us out. Appreciate it. Like I said, we have a guest in the house. He's an author, healthcare technology, and business partner with over 10 years experience in the healthcare finance industry field. He is the founder of Enough Care, a telemedicine and wellness startup. He's currently based in Washington, D.C., metro area. That's correct? Yep. Yeah. Please, please, please welcome Mohammed Kamara to Stuck in the Middle Podcast. How you feeling, bro? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to be on the show. Uh, man, I'm looking forward, looking forward to dialogue, man. Man, thank you so much, man, for you know making time. Uh, I know you're busy. You know, you you were actually just uh, nominated and won uh, the IO Africa. Uh, what what category was it? Was it in? I saw it. I, saw, I don't know. Okay, sweet, sweet. Congratulations on that, man. Technology and innovation. That's dope. Yep, yep, yep. Thanks, man. Yeah, you. I want to break the ice like this, right? You, you, you actually said before you build something. You know, we're talking about technology and innovation. Before you build something, go and test it first. Why do you hold that as a motto? I think the biggest thing that we tend to do with tech is we build and we and we think that people will come and use a lot, utilize our technology. So we ask, mm -hmm. we have all these assumptions that we have not proven yet. And this theory that we have, we think that they're right, but they're really just theories, right? And we're trying to test and reiterate. So don't build anything yet until you figure out what the problem is for that customer mm -hmm. that you're willing to solve. And that person is willing to pay you some money to solve that problem. When you build, and the assumption that when we build, the people will come without doing any marketing, that's a lie. It doesn't happen. So for us, our stories with Enough Cares is, my sister passed away giving birth. So that was my purpose, right? But I wanted to figure out what was the gap in that care that happened. And so it involves my time going to Dominican Republic, traveling to Costa Rica, um, Cuba as well, and Sierra Leone, and, um, and then, and then some, some other Caribbean countries to, to test this theory that what is causing the gap in care in those countries, right? And what can we do to innovate? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by a gap in care in, you know, I'm just going to go and say third world countries when it comes to, you know what I mean, like uh, health care, like what kind of gaps, what kind of, you know, disparities are there? So some of the health disparities, and uh, as you are probably familiar, is we don't have, we have very, in Africa, we have very bright, smart individuals, right, that come to the U.S. and stay here. And so that usually means lack of access to care, right? The brain power that we have in Africa is then now transferred to the United States. Mm -hmm. Most people are come here, they're educated, they're smart, they become doctors and they become entrepreneurs. They're well educated, but they cannot go back to Africa right away. Reason, reason is because of the payment gap, right? Someone mm -hmm. here that went to school here has expensive loans. They have to work here to make that money, right? But the issue is now we're left with a hole when they transferred over here. Now who's mm. taking care of back home? And 
Yeah. I would have, we have, we have an entire plan behind me flying. Um, yeah. part, of the, <laughs> part of the issues when that cross, um, like that, that cross planet happened, the movement from Africa to, to, um, to the US, that mm -hmm. gap occurs. So now we're trying, what we're trying to do is the brain power that's over here connected back home, right? And improve mm -hmm. those that access to care that happens, right? So a doctor that's over here in the states, that's a board certified doctor, can end up with a nurse over there in a, in a hospital in in Sierra Leone or in Cameroon, and they can do virtual care via video mm. text. Um, and and then that kit can be available in the hospital settings, and it can be, be in our outpatient clinics as well. Oh wow, that's that's really dope, and that's you know all done through the platform Enough Care? Yep, yep. So talk yep. to us about Enough Care. What, when did it launch and what exactly is Enough Care? Cause you know what I mean? Like in do research for our talk right now, I'm, 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 I'll tell you this man, and you deserve that award. I'm impressed. I've never heard of it. I think, you know, in the, in the world of telemedicine is, is something that is genius. So wh when did it launch first and what exactly is Enough Care by the encountering for the first time? So it launched in 2018 and what what enough cares is the digital behavior change um, mobile mobile app. So it's it's both a patient app and a and, and a physician app. So doctors and patients, you and you and myself can connect to them virtually via video. And then we also have a NASA power technology. So it's it's patented by NASA, where me, you as as, as peers, right, we can be able to connect our friends. And be able to take a 10 second video of ourselves that 10 second video turns into um an algorithm that's powered by nasa that gives me my my health risk right it gives me my health my my health so it gives me all this good information for me to empower me to take to make to make healthy changes in my in my in, in my diet in my behavior so i can feel empowered and then it put you into a group which we call a, a health tribe so me and my friends now can co collaborate and then we can play games. So we gamify our wellness. That means, hey, I have, I have, a, I have, a, I have a peep beat and I can track my steps and those steps can become points that I earn and those mm -hmm. points can be rewards that, that, then, that then I can earn. So in a group setting, for example, you and I in a group setting, we can count our steps and whoever has the most steps then, then earn points and those points we can redeem as gift cards, for example, um, we, we can we can redeem, redeem those we can, we can take those points and redeem, redeem them as gift cards to so incentivize good behavior. So that's mm -hmm. the entire notion of it that it helps you to change your behavioral health. How you know what I mean like in innovating does this work in like you know the remote parts of Africa, for example? I'm sure you and your team thought about that, um, especially with something that is you know heavily on. You know the, the the first of all before you answer that what is telemedicine you know i know that's a you know generic <laughs> what is telemedicine and yeah, telemedicine is, is a simple way to to describe it as me and my doctor we're connecting virtually via video right so mm -hmm. what whatever we're doing currently here we're, we're connected via zoom it's a secure the reason why it's telemedicine is because it's a, it's, a, it's in a hyper compliant secured platform so it's right. encrypted right but it's really video text, uh, video and, and and text in a secured format, and then mm -hmm. there's other aspect of layers of, um, to it as well that helps you to be able to stay well. Mm -hmm. so that's telemedicine. And the second piece I think you mentioned was what are we the doing? The struggles of connecting, right? Yeah, yep. exactly. So, what, so Africa has, uh, well, some countries are well advanced. Other countries may have some broadband issue. But currently, when when Rwanda. We, we partner up with a hospital, the second largest hospital in Rwanda called the Dream Medical Center. They mm -hmm. are, they have 20,000 patients. And so we're partnering up with them. We're empowering those clinicians that are on the ground to see those 20,000 um, pa um, patients that, that they take care of on a daily basis. We're also in talk with folks um, in Zimbabwe. So we're powering mm -hmm. um, a health plan, um, health insurance plan in Zimbabwe. And mm -hmm. then we're also in talk with um, folks in, in Nigeria as well to power, power some of those hospitals hospitals in, in Nigeria. You know, um, L Lagos Teaching Hospital, for example, right? Mm -hmm. We're in talk with them. So really, it is, we're going through NGOs as a way to connect the dot for some of those um, um, local hospitals that are, that are in Africa. Mm, man, I love it. I love it. I want to get to know the person, Mohammed. Where are you from, brother? 
I'm originally from Sierra Leone, so I grew up I grew up um, in Sierra Leone for a good when I was I think I left the country when I was eight eight years old, and mm -hmm. uh, I left because of the civil war that happened there, right? So we got hit by right. the civil war. Um, we survived, thankfully, 10 years after. My mom is still back home. Um, mm -hmm. So Sierra Leone is a tend to be very strong, right? We're very strong, even through all those little issues that we've gone through, surviving the civil war, Ebola crisis that happened there as well. Um, so I mm -hmm. left that country. I left Sierra Leone and went to Guinea and stayed there for about a year and a half or so. Um, then left, I, I, I left Guinea, went to Senegal for six months, then England for six months, then finally to the States. So that's 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 me in a nutshell. Um, and then I and of course I went to Ohio State for my undergrad. I um, I went I, I went up to uh, went up to Michigan and played soccer there too. But um, hmm. on a high level, I'm originally from Sierra, um, Sierra Leone. What, how many siblings do you have? My let's just say my daddy was a Rolling Stone. He was busy. Uh, he took that really to heart. <laughs> so we have seven seven of us. Uh, three, oh four, man, four, four girls. So daddy was super super busy. Hey man, that's that's the way they did it back in the day. We matter it. Big families is the more the merrier. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. How many siblings you have? Six. We, you know, you y'all beat us by one. <laughs> <laughs> y'all beat us by one, so you know what I mean. I, I, after six, I was like, "Hey, y'all gotta I'm out, some right? family planning, some <laughs> family planning gotta go into this." Um, what's the story though? You mentioned it in passing. You know what I mean? Like what? You know, because I know for you, did you actually started in the banking industry mm -hmm. before you go? In, you know, you went into healthcare industry. So why did you make that pivot? Why did you make that change? What's the story behind it? So. The pivot, the pivot happened. I've always been in healthcare finance and health tech, but I've mm -hmm. always been more on the reviewer side and some partly some of the developer side, but, but really I'm managing products, right? So the, mm -hmm. switch, the switch happened because one, my sister passed giving birth, and then my aunt, the following year, two years after in Ohio, she passed as well, um, giving birth. So my sister, when my, when my, when my sister passed giving birth, her child, her her daughter survived for a week and she passed as well. Fast hmm. forward to my aunt who passed in Ohio. Um, her son survived. So my dad is in Ohio. They're still a kid. Um, they're still taking care of the son. And so that's hmm. my, like I got to do something here, right, in this space. So to really connect the dots to serve the underserved, right? To really mm -hmm. empower the underserved. So this all began because I made a switch to one take a leap, career, career path leap, um, and then learn and be able to really innovate in the space and see what's out there and what can I do differently. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's, you know what I mean? Like just really serving it on service. Like you mentioned, what service does enough care provide as far as like, you know what I mean? Like what insurance do you accept or how does it work really for you? Like somebody that's like, yo, I'm in America or I'm in Cameroon, see you blah, blah, blah. How does somebody take advantage of the service so the, the uh, one of the cool thing is if you are already connected to a, a, your own provider you can actually refer your provider right so we sell directly to providers you can refer your own provider and you can you can, you can say hey i have a doctor and that 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 doctor um i want us to be able to see my doctor virtually you can be able to um refer your doctor to us but it, the app is free to consumers right so you can actually download it for free um as a patient and with the, the, the cost happen when you're connected with a provider. You can pay either out of pocket or you can pay with your insurance. Mm -hmm. um, so what's helpful for us is if you're, if you're a viewer out there, you want to really connect with your provider, I always encourage them to actually get on our platform. We also sell this too. So we're also partnering up with um, other insurance plan. So we sell this as a white label to the to providers. So sometimes you might you might not even know that we are we, you're connecting to um, connecting to our platform because we're we're behind the scene. We sell it, we sell it as a license to to some providers as well and insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to ask a question here. Um, you know, just backtracking a, a little bit based on your finance, what can you tell us about the survival rate of you know women giving birth? in different demographics, whether it's, you know, in the United States here, white and black, or back home in Africa, you know what I mean? Like in, in you know, the remote or, you know, city areas. So the, the issue around, some of the issue that we, that black women face is 
empathy, right? When you let's talk empathy. Empathy when a doctor sees a, a African American male or um, woman, right? They tend to have this stigma where that these pe people are strong, and so we will not pay them that close of attention, right? Mm. So one of the things I just I just had a discussion with um, the VP of Medicaid for Anthem. Um, I just mm. had her on my my podcast recently, um, and in the, in the underserved areas women tend to be ignored black men tend to be ignored and when they're going through pregnancy postpartum care isn't really emphasized so they might be experiencing pain or they uh, and they're talking to their clinician hey clinician i'm having a certain type of pain can you address it and those, those clinicians mm -hmm. they're very dismissal that hey we'll give you the tablet and go home but really mm -hmm. clinicians that, are, that have empathy they stop so I'll give you an example here. One of our one of our users, um, she's a she she's a nurse practitioner. She got on our, on our platform. She connected with uh with with Dr. Nelson Alawudi, um, one of our physicians. He's an OB OBGYN, and that doctor is trained as an OBGYN, but he sees a lot of patients that look like us, black, right? Mm -hmm. And so she was experiencing an infertility issue. She connected on the platform. She went and she already had a local um, OB-GYN in, in Ohio. But the issue is that OB-GYN OB -GYN was very, being very dismissal and did not understand what was causing her for infertility. So she connected with, with um, Dr. Nelson all over, over, the, over um, our platform. And they had a conversation for, I think, an hour or 40 minutes. And fast forward a, a month after she texted us, hey, I'm pregnant. He had the knowledge to tell her these are the things to take to get pregnant. And then fast forward in October of 2018, her baby was, was born alive and well, healthy. And then she came back and utilized the platform to lose weight. So when we talk maternal, maternal care for black women, some of the issue around this is poor nature. When we say poor nature is you might have you, you when you're going through pregnancy there's certain things that you need to do as a woman right and mm -hmm. even the men too you're supposed to be making sure that you're eating healthy you're eating well you're getting rid of all any toxin that's around your around around your your space so if you might you might have a new couch and that couch might be really new but the, the toxin from the, the couch itself can affect you affect you during your pregnancy right so you have mm -hmm. to be very mindful of that before you even get pregnant as a man or a woman you have to make sure that you, 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 you do a cleanse. And that part of that, that cleanse, cleanse is really to make sure that you have a healthy sperm uh, for the woman. It's like some of those things that you need to be doing to make sure that you are going to have a healthy pregnancy and then you're eating well, you, you're, you're taking the, the, right, the, the right magnesium to, ha to have a healthy baby and a healthy sleeping um, pattern. So those are the things that most black women do not have the knowledge around, right? And we need mm -hmm. OBGYN that have empathy, that have understanding for black women um, to take care of them instead of, instead of dismissing their concerns during pregnancy. Mm, you're, dropping, you're dropping gems, and I'm sure there's a lot more of that on your podcast. Talk to us about it. What is the podcast called? You know, what kind of topics do you and guests do you bring on and how can people connect to get all this knowledge? So we we really, we bring, we're bringing a lot of guests um, that are a bunch of doctors, um, health entrepreneurs. Um, I, I think I mentioned a lot of healthcare, healthcare executives and CEOs, um, Medicaid, mm -hmm. Medicaid, Medicaid VPs that work for Anthem. We brought in, we said, um, um, at the beginning of the, 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 the show itself, we brought in the CEO of, um, um, the prior CEO of Innova Health System um, in Virginia. So these are really top healthcare experts that we're bringing in to really share knowledge that one will empower patients to, to action, right? Um, and mm -hmm. give them, give them, give those providers a space as well to share their expertise. So the, it's mm -hmm. really the purpose of the, the, the podcast is to empower patients. And um, the part of my book as well, it's called The Empowered Patient, um, mm -hmm. the, the title of the book. And so the podcast mm -hmm. is called The Empowered Patient. So it's really about empowering patients to be able to take action um, and connect the doctors, yeah. connect the providers. The issue with, like, well, let me address one issue. One issue in the healthcare system is there's the middleman, right? And the middleman is your insurance company. But right. 
the, the, pe the two people that are very important are me as a consumer, I'm a patient, and the doctors, right? And we want to make sure that those doctors are connecting seamlessly without the middleman empowering so much. We're, we wanna, we, 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 we're doing this podcast to empower a lot of the clinicians and also empower, empowering the patients to take action and connect mm. seamlessly. So that's, that's Man, the question, um, value for the book and, and, and as well a podcast. Man, I love it. I love it. We're going to get, you know, I was going to ask you about a book a little bit later and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. But, you know, it's like personally speaking, man, I know you provide health care. How, how, how is your mental health? How is your health care in these trying times of COVID-19? And you know what I mean? How, how has COVID-19 affected you personally and also business? I know, especially for you being tele, tele-doc, telemedicine. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sure, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a good thing. So, you know, talk to us. So, mental health is uh, so tricky now. Especially with social distancing, right? We're right. told to social distance. But if you look at our generation and you look at the older generation, social distancing men on the other side of it is social isolation. What does social mm -hmm. isolation do for you? It tends to do keep you in a space by yourself with your own thoughts and your own realities. And what that means is if you're not comfortable with your own thoughts and your own realities, that scares the living crap out of you, right? It affects mm -hmm. your mental You don't know how to cope. So that's the issue of social distancing. When we're out of this pandemic, hopefully soon, there's going to be a lot of increase of mental health, right? Mm -hmm. Whether that is domestic abuse that happens because now you got to deal with your partner, one, mm -hmm. right? Domestic abuse, or, that is, or whether that is... I can socialize with my loved ones because I have to social distance. And if I, if it happens that you have you have COVID, you have to actually social distance. So the, mm -hmm. there is this, the, there's less interaction with, with people, and so mental health becomes very very important in this time. The ways that I cope is this: I I I, I play college college soccer and run track, right? So that routine is part of me still. Um, recent, recently. Um, I, I, I virtually with a group of friends, I think it's like 20 of us, we're doing a challenge. Mm -hmm. And for the, ch the challenge that we're doing is 20, 20, 320 push up, 320 sit ups, 320, um, no, 350, 350 push up, 250 um, sit ups, 350 squats, and then 100 dumbbell, um, 100 dumbbells, and then 100, um, 100 curls, and then 100. Um, 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 what is it? Hundred um, lunches. So that motivates you, and we're in a group setting. It motivates us to stay healthy, um, and it's really, it's really, it's really dope. So we, I also, we also tend to play soccer as well. Um, that's that's way, too many, way too many, way too many, way too many push-ups for me, brother. I ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing it. Way too many push-ups, man. No, no, no. Yeah, tripping. No, 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 no. <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 what I mean, honestly. That's how we deal with our mental health, man. Man, man I, I read it. I read it. That's that's needed. It's needed. However, uh, how, you know, how are you, you coping? Man, I uh I, I you know, family is really close to me, so you know we can drive over, stand outside, talk, 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 you know what I mean? And uh, I'm still I'm still working, I still go in the office, so uh, you know, that keeps me busy, you know. I'm not quote unquote essential, but I guess essential. So I'm just glad and blessed to, you know, still still keep health and you know, hope to God that, you know, everything is still well after this is over. So yeah, I'm I'm good, I think for the most part. So I'm I'm good. Thanks for asking, man. For sure, sure. And I think you asked the other question is how is business? So because of the of COVID, a lot of the physicians are closing their practices or they're told to now. So a lot of surgery centers are being are closed, right? And so mm -hmm. some of the surgery centers, then you, you have to find a way to replace that revenue. And so a lot of a lot of clinicians then now are becoming more virtual and open to the concept. And the, the, the laws and reimbursement rates have uh, been much more friendly um, right now. Because now the same, the, when you see a doctor virtually, you can get, the, that doctor can get, the, get paid the same way as an in-person visit. So... Mm -hmm. As a result, tele, um, telemedicine is is booming in the has boomed a lot in the COVID nineteen era, um, mm -hmm. and we've seen a lot of even activities around M and transactions too. Um, I don't know you you mentioned mm -hmm. well, I compared to the Teladoc for example, right? Um, Teladoc least recently just purchased 
a second competitor of ours. That was, one, that was that was one of my questions. That was one of my questions. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. Billion dollar in that, 18 in that million. So, so with that, with that, it's like our, our niche is Libingo. That's really a competitor. Libingo is a, a big competitor out there with um, diabetes type two, type two management, right? But then mm -hmm. now they've been pushed by Teledog. And we have to be very strategic in that, watching that MA transaction happen. Because for us, is there are things that, that um, Livingo has done in the employer wellness setting, which is where we want to be, right? That's where we're going. And we, we have been very strategic on serving the underserved. They're not there, right? They don't understand that, that at least that space. Medicaid patients, the underserved, that's where our dedication is, right? We understand mm -hmm. that patient panel. Um, they, they may look like us, that they may be minorities, and we have the, the physicians that understand that empathy, right? So we're focused on serving those physicians and those patients in the underserved, such as federally qualified centers and NGOs. So we're creating a niche rather than competing with them. Mm -hmm. Man, 18 billion, bro. That's about to be y'all. <laughs> how, as a startup, how, yeah. as a startup, though, you know what I mean? Like, whoa. As a startup, how did you raise funds to get off the ground for lunch for enough care? So the beautiful, the beautiful, the beautiful thing is their time that you are the first investor, right? Mm -hmm. You as the founder, you're the first investor. Um, we've gotten into accelerator programs that have given us funding, but you're the initial first investor. So whatever saving you've had, um, for, for me it was, I had 401k and so it, 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 it involves you taking some some of that income from that 401k and starting starting on my own, um, and sometimes it's like I also was working as a consultant, figuring it out on my own, really self funding it, so bootstrapping. Um, with bootstrap, we've gotten some some grants grants funded as well, but all of the the, the equity itself, I've been very purposeful. We got into an accelerator, a Nova Health System accelerator. They offered ten, they offered seven AK um, for seven for 10% of the company. I thought that was mm -hmm. very sweet. Um, so I wanted a relationship with the CEO then, right? And I kept that relationship with the CEO, Todd Sadek, because he's, he he sat, sat in the, um, he was the board of, um, he sat on the board for a company called Avizier, which is another telemedicine mm -hmm. um, space, and they sold, so I'm, I'm well. So I wanted the mm -hmm. relationship more than I wanted the money. Um, so I, I kept that relationship. He's actually a, a, a part of our part of our board now too. He he, he mentors me and, and, and mentors us. So I'm I'm saying this is the first investor is always you, which mm -hmm. is me. Um, mm -hmm. And I have to take risk. And now we've gone into another. We, got, we just recently got into another accelerator called Project Healthcare in Nashville, and that is really meaning some of those ex healthcare executives. So as Nashville, as small as you think Nashville is, and Tennessee have all of the top players in healthcare in that space. Um, mm -hmm. So it's exciting because we just they, they announced that recently that we got into the accelerator and that will help us really gain more traction in, in the employer wellness space. Mm, man, hey, you just say, you know what I'm saying, you're only as good as your network and how you're able to use it. And you talk a lot about coalition. Um, uh, talk to me about how you're able to use that, you know, to leverage not only in healthcare, but you, you know, saying, as an innovator. First, you know, in coalition in the healthcare space and also coalition as you build, you know, in healthcare to take it to different heights. So collaboration and coalition is super important, right? No dream can be done alone. The brilliancy of your dream can only happen by the team that you actually have. Right. So my, in, in seeing a lot of cool things about in healthcare is because they have an incredible team. Uh, mm -hmm. They're pretty smart. It's a very diverse team. My UI UX um, designer, who's he's the, who's the head of product. His name is Love Motri and Bobum. He works. He will actually work for Care First um, for several years. He's been developing apps since he was like 16 years old. So he's a pretty bright guy. Um, he's actually from Zimbabwe originally as well. But um, Love More, and then we've got um, a lot of folks that we also in 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 house. Um, super talented. Um, mm -hmm. So well, they're the people that are actually behind the scene. They're the, they're the ones that make things run with Innovcare. So we, we, before you start anything, find an incredible team. Then take that team to find networks that will help you get traction. 
and help mm-hmm. help be accountable. Part of those networks, the accelerator programs, for example, and accelerator programs, they're meant for you to really look at your milestones and be able to zoom in on those milestones and hit those milestones and allow you to be able to get to, hey, if you're currently at 50K annual, annual um, monthly revenue, let's get that to 100K, right? How do we get that there? Those relationships. So for the project healthcare, for example, the accelerator we just got into, thankfully, we are, we're part of the self-care council where all of the top healthcare CEOs are across the country sit, right? And usually to be part of that, 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 that board and that council, you got to pay like 20K to be a part of that. Thankfully, through the program, it's zero, it's zero cost for us. So that's usually those networking, those relationships are how you become super successful, the coalition piece, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Man, I ain't going to ask what, you know, enough care is worth, but I'm, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to leave that for them people. Hey, you see, it's a man. We're hoping to get there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we're hoping no. to get there man that's dope man no congratulations on that what are you focused on right now what are your big projects you know and you probably mentioned that in passing but you know what what is the one thing that you and your team or you personally focused on right now what are some big projects or ideas that you have that you want to touch on in the future so for us I, I so we imagine um healthcare in africa right even here in the States, is really a healthcare that allows consumer to be part of it, to be really motivated and to be very inclusive. So healthcare, what we're creating at Enough Cares is really a technology where we can then create clinics as well in Africa, right? And those clinics, mm-hmm. we're empowering those clinics. So for, for, for us, so the big things that we're working on currently, the milestones we're working working on achieving is revenue milestones. Um, we are also working on product milestones as well, right? And I think I explained to you some of the high level products um, mm-hmm. we're offering. We are really pushing on revenue and products. So getting user base or uh, the thing that on my, is on my mind all the time, 24 um, seven. Mm-hmm. And really, you're using opportunities like the project healthcare, for example. Um, we're also doing some. We're also pitching to a few, few, few um, folks as well. We're doing a couple of demos. HubSpot. We got into that accelerator program with HubSpot, and we're really focusing on how do we figure out our marketing, right? The B two B side, not so much B two C side, because the B two C side is expensive. Um, mm-hmm. As a startup, going to B two C is a really kills your. It kill. It's too expensive for us. So we are really mm-hmm. looking to be a relationship coalition, be a relationship to get to, to get to get to get more users as opposed to really spending money ads on um, on Facebook and on Instagram. That's that's expensive. Um, mm-hmm. If you haven't raised millions of millions of dollars, you're gonna find find yourself running out of money really quick if you choose some of those strategies. Mm. Man, this guy dropping gems out here, man. Listen, as a professional in this space for you know over ten years experience. What, what advice would you give, you know, hospitals or healthcare providers right now to make, you know, as we move the culture forward, as we make tomorrow a better place? So, so here for, for providers, simple is this, that the new, the old, the old way of doing healthcare in 2019 and all the year 2020 is not going to work anymore, right? Mm-hmm. Innovation is going to happen whether or not you want it. Some of, some, some, some people are push against health and virtual care it's here to stay <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not gonna go away so it's either you one you have to embrace it and we're we're here as a company we're here to teach that right we, we do podcasting we do um, blog posts we, we do webinars to really to be able to educate providers right another aspect of it is patient side too patients are the number one people that make healthcare move. And for someone that is starting in this space, understand that you're here to serve the patients. You're here mm-hmm. to serve the people, the patients and the providers. The other people around them are, are your support system, but you're really here to serve those people and they'll never lose sight of that. I think that's important mm-hmm. if you're in this space and then try to understand the different workflows too, right? Because if you're in a hospital settings, it's different how, what that, hospitals, um, milestones, and and, um, and, um, and strategic goals are, if you're in a hospital settings. 
because those that hospital is they they're more concerned about reimbursement rates, right? That churn rate, that reimbursement rate, is what they're concerned about. If I if I come to the hospital, I may, I want to make sure that I am going to get that patient dismissed as fast as I can, so that I can have those beds available to be used, right? So they're concerned mm-hmm. about that. So you understand as an entrepreneur in the health tech space, how do you fit into that workflow? And how does your technology fit into that? You need to really be mindful of that. Just don't just come and build, right? Remember I said, don't build, don't build, mm-hmm. go and test it out first and ask those questions, mm-hmm. very important. The other aspect, uh, aspect as well is surround yourself with really smart people. Um, mm-hmm. You become smart because you're thirsty, you're learning. And this book, I, I learned along the way too, right? That has really helped me to become an industry expert. You do a podcast right now, which is amazing, right? You've been doing this podcasting and that podcasting that you're doing, industry people are going to come to you because you, then you start building your industry thought, thought leadership, right? That's so crucial in this space to have a, mm-hmm. uh, a, a thought leader and be able to be able help, which is where we're, 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 we're really focused on, right? Mm-hmm. Have that industry expert so people can start coming to you and they can buy your services and they find out more about you. Um, mm-hmm. So those are that, that's those are some of the health tips I, I hope anyone that's starting this space will will just not start and build the technology. Find a way to create a niche for yourself. Mm-hmm. What are you currently reading? Um, I just recently read, and I, I know this, this is this. So one of one of the the strength, strength finder is, is a book I just recently read, but that's for me. Um, there, there's a book called Startup of You. So this is this is folks for that listen, the entrepreneurs that, that, that listen to this podcast. It's called Startup of You, and it's written by um, Bed Hoffman, founder of um, LinkedIn. And mm-hmm. really, really, it dives into the aspect of you trying to figure out how do you build connections. If you have a startup idea or you have a career and you're trying to transition into the tech space, how do you do that, right? Um, and I hear, I hear, and I read a lot of healthcare books as well. Um, mm-hmm. So Startup Review is a is a good is a good is a good book. Um, another book is talking to customers. Um, before you build anything, you gotta go talk to customers, right? Or they will, they will not come and utilize you whatever you whatever you're building. You got to be brave enough to talk to customers. So there's a book about, about book out there about talking to customers, and it really teaches you how to build a company to using the um the bit what what we call a business model canvas. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, business mm-hmm. model canvas is really just a not in, in a nutshell how to tackle a problem where your customers yeah, are yeah. those relationship, right? So it forces you to go out of the building. You can be in an office and be like, I have it all figured out. No, you don't. Go talk to customers and they'll tell you what their problem is and see if they'll pay for, pay for the service that you're trying to offer. Um, so those are some of the books I'm reading. Um, mm-hmm. Another book that's really cool um, that, I, that, I, that I swear by all the time is... Why am I going blank, Nate? I'll come. I'll come to that. But that, that's, yeah. it's a really good book. Um, it's people like, can people can yeah. people can hit you up. You know, find out what it is. Because I was going to ask, how can people connect with you? I know we've run out of time here, but how can people connect with you, man, and tap into this wealth of knowledge that you have in this field? How can people connect with you now and listen to the podcast, get a grab, a hold of your book, and, and you know different things like that? So I'm um, pretty easy access accessible. I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, um, I'm super active on LinkedIn. Most social media, I'm I'm on IG, but I don't, I'm not that active on IG that much. Um, I'm more, I'm there. Um, so for the company, in of case, it, we're both we're on, we're on IG, we're on Facebook, we're on um, um, Twitter, um, we are on TikTok. I I know that's the the, the Gen Z's generation. We're not there yet. Um, mm-hmm. And I just recently heard that um, TikTok is gonna is gonna get banned in the US side, and um, Facebook is gonna buy buy it. Um, hopefully, I think Facebook or Apple, one of them is, is possibly gonna buy US operation if if they get banned. Um, but mm-hmm. how do you find us? Is podcast, book, um, and um, LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And then hey, our, man, listen, our, our website as well. Which is? So, in of care is www.inovcares.com. So, we're, 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 we're there. You can, you, you, can, you can send me a direct message. Um, you can send my send me a direct message as well. 
Yeah, I just connected with you on LinkedIn, man. This has been an awesome conversation, bro. Um, definitely look forward to connecting with you back, you know, back home in IO spaces or wherever, you know what I mean? Thank you so much for, for joining us and, you know, breaking things down for us. I appreciate you having me on the call, man. Yeah, man, this has been dope. Listen, if you enjoy what you heard, what you watched, hit that subscribe button, hit the ringer so you get updates every time we have a new guest. This is a weekly podcast. We are on social media as well, SITM Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, I believe Snapchat. For all y'all kids, we about to do a TikTok. If they don't ban it, I'm just kidding. I don't know what AK is gonna do. <laughs> but email us if you wanna write for us, if you wanna write a blog for us, SITMPodcast237 at gmail.com. Again, the website is www.SITMPodcast.com. I'm Reflex, we had Mohammed Kamara in the building. He's killing me in the tech space. Uh, listen, bro, appreciate you again for joining us. Shout out to AK in the background creating this. And uh, hey, y'all have fun. Thank you so much, bro.